here. Good morning. Uh, I just had something pop into my mind you know, going to school. And so these drives, and then I'm going to school in Florida or wherever. I always sit, you know, this stuff just runs through my head. So I thought I'd just do a quick one on this. Um, ROSC, Return of Spontaneous Circulation, and 12 Leads. I don't remember where I read this. Um, it was based on a study, and I don't remember what the study is. I like to be able to quote that stuff, you know, like if somebody asks me, hey, where did you get this? Oh, it's in the textbooks, it's in uh, Bob Page's program, it's in whatever study. And I just, I can't do that this morning. Um, but it makes sense to me. That's one of the most important things to me with, with some of these things is, does it make sense? Is it easy to do? Does it make sense? So, <clears throat> one of the things we see a lot after ROSC with cardiac arrest is uh, 12 lead changes, you know, STEMIs. And so we bypass the local facility and we go to the cardiac center and they do their 12 lead and everything looks great. And they're like, well, why the hell did you bring them here? So, <clears throat> excuse me, a little COVID cough left over. Um, so what this study said was after ROSC, wait 10 minutes to do your first 12 lead. You know, so 12 leads, EKG changes, um, during an ischemic event or a STEMI, why do we have 12 lead changes? Because they're hypoxic or anoxic, right? Low oxygen levels or no oxygen. Why do they have that? Well, they got a blockage, right? They've got um, something causing hypoperfusion of the tissue. In a STEMI, it's a clot, you know, it's a plaque and a clot. Think about what cardiac arrest is. It's hypoxia. It's right low cardiac output inducing hypoxic uh, environment so if we are doing decent CPR then, well you know we're perfusing the organs the best CPR on the planet is only about 30% effective right the best I look at it this way you're doing CPR and you're exhaled and tidal CO2 right you're exhaled carbon dioxide levels are 10, 10, 10, 10, and you're like, oh God, this guy's not gonna make it. And then you look over and you're like, holy shit, it's 45 now. Boom, check a pulse. I got a great pulse. So if their exhaled carbon dioxide increases four and a half times, this may not be exact, but it helps me understand what's going on. If their exhaled carbon dioxide is four and a half times, then their metabolism is roughly four and a half times better, which means their cardiac output is roughly four and a half times better. So if we've got ROSC and we're improving that cardiac output all the way to nasal prongs, then the myocardium is going to be better oxygenated also. So if you wait 10 to 15 minutes for that first 12 lead, you allow those hypoxic or anoxic myocardial tissues to become perfused again you allow that perfusion to onload oxygen and take out the trash then those walls look normal again and you can go to that local facility who can do hopefully better care than what we have available in the truck you know if you're on the let's say eastern side of the state <coughs> excuse me uh, Wakefield you know Milton Wakefield Ossipy Right, uh, and we take our STEMIs to Wentworth Douglas, uh, you know, bypass protocol, Wentworth Douglas. Remember that a large portion of these ROSC patients will re-arrest, right? So we're in the back of a truck and if you're a medic, you know, you might have a lidocaine drip running because, you know, I'm old, I like lidocaine, not amiodarone. But you might have a lidocaine drip running and you've got uh, levofed and you're titrating that up and up and up and up because you're having trouble keeping their map at 65. Are they better off arresting in an ER, Huggins or Frisbee, where there is an ER doc? And at Frisbee, there's cardiology available. Um, and there's all kinds of help available. Um, are they better off re-arresting there or in the back of your ambulance on Route 16, you know, somewhere between Rochester and Dover? So if they're not a STEMI, they're a critical patient. You know, they're intubated or not. God, I hope they're intubated. Um, you know, we've got 
at least one, hopefully two or three lines running. We're giving them a little fluid. We're titrating that lever fed and that lidocaine. That, that's a critical patient. They should go to the closest appropriate. If they're not a STEMI, they can go to that local ER. Um, you know, I can think of several STEMIs or several ROS I've had. And yeah, I, first thing, oh, get a 12 lead. Yep, looks like a STEMI. Take them to that cath lab and it's not. So just a thought this morning on ROSC and 12 leads. Now, trend them. Do your first one at 10 minutes. And if it looks like a STEMI, okay, you start towards, uh, you know, in, in this case we just talked about, Wentworth Douglas. So I'm in Ossipy, I do a, a 12 lead, looks like a STEMI, I activate the protocol process, and I head for Dover. Five minutes later, when you are doing another set of vital signs, hit that goddamn 12 lead button. Get another 12 lead. Oh, that one looks good. Five minutes later, another set of vitals. Hit that 12 lead. That one's good too. Hmm. Now I'm in, you know, Southern Wakefield, uh, Southern Milton, Northern Rochester. I can go to Frisbee. Okay. So don't do just one, right? Leave them on it and trend that with your bottles also. Anyways, I uh, hope you have a good day. Uh, I'm going to go sit in class myself now for a while. I'll see you all later.